Johannes here and welcome back to Modded Minecraft and as you can see we've set up in our new base it's still fairly uh, rough at the moment but it's just really a temporary setup just so I could get some things crafted so um, let's very quickly run through what we've got here so yeah uh, most of these old machines that I had set up before uh, down in the Hobbit hole and um, just really plonked them down here just because I needed to craft some things uh, over here you can see I've set up two sag mills and they are new um, basically I've got it so we've got a uh, cobblestone going into here that gets turned into sand and sometimes gravel and then that's getting turned into silicon and also occasionally flint and the reason I'm making silicon is because I went out and found all of the presses for applied energy logistics so let's just quickly grab that and chuck that back in there so I'm making these uh, printed silicon um, parts and I really want to get into the applied energy logistics I was going to hold off doing it because it's kind of end game stuff and I wanted to go through using some of the other mods first but to be honest I don't really like any of the other item sorting mods for sort of mass storage of stuff um, they work, but they're not ideal, to be honest, and they're sort of more of a faff, and if I'm going to mess around setting them up, I might as well just use applied energistics. Um, you can see at the moment, this temporary setup I've got is using the extra utilities, and I've got sorting pipes set for these, and basically the way the sorting pipes works is if the connected infantry, so for example this one, already has iron in it, so this already has the iron in, um, it will then put any iron that goes past it into that chest. And you'll notice these ones up the top here at the very end. These are mod sorting pipes. And basically what this will do is it will go through the whole chain. And if it gets to the end and it's not managed to put it into any chest, it will sort it out into an inventory with uh, all of the items of the same mod. So for example, here's applied in logistics too. So any items I put in here that don't get sorted that are applied in logistics will get put into that chest. Um, you can see for mechanism and stuff. So it's mostly like crafted things and stuff that you don't have on mass um, so this is a really simple and cheap setup and it does the job but the big pain is there's no easy way to retrieve things you have to go in and check it. I can never remember where anything is so um, the other problem as well is if you take all of this out so for example if I took them emeralds out um, it now doesn't know to put emeralds in there so you have to remember to leave at least one in that chest so that the sorting works uh, which is less than ideal uh, so yeah, applied logistics I think is going to be the way to go. Um, I'm going to set up a basic system just for storage. I might not go into the auto crafting and stuff just yet, but I know once I get the basics set up, I probably will end up going into that just because it makes life a lot quicker and easier. Uh, so yes, today what we're going to be doing is setting up an ore processing system. So um, before I just had the enricher and then the smelter and basically it turned it into dust and then smelted it and you've got your items out so that doubled your ingots. Um, what we're going to do today is the times free processing. So what this uses is the uh, purifier and that turns it into um, I can't remember exactly what it turns it into but one of these type of things and then it gets uh, crushed and then you go from the crusher to the enricher and then the enricher to the smelter and it basically gives you three ingots for every ore um, which is not too bad it's not as good you can do four and five times um, uh, I want to say all doubling but it's obviously not doubling if it's four or five times but uh, multiplying is probably the right description there um, but to do that you need something called brine um, which you need a, a salination plant set up for and that's kind of a big pain to set up um, and you need a whole ton of copper um, I think there is probably a way to do it without that I did try a couple of ways by um, you can create salt and use the salt to create the, the gases that you need, but it's exceptionally slow to do it that way. And I managed to get a system that was pretty fast, but to use it on a server, it would be really, really laggy. So um, I, at some point I will set up a brine factory and um, we'll get the five times uh, multiply again on the ores. But for now, this should do the job. And I'm going to use Steve's factory um, to manage where the items are getting put. And you can see I've also got a pulverizer here. And the reason for that is that um, things like diamond, redstone and emeralds, they will work in the purifier. So the purifier will give you uh, two or three diamonds per ore block. Um, but the problem is they won't then get pushed to the next step because it just gives you the diamonds in that first step. So it um, kind of clogs the whole system up. So what I'm going to do is have basically 
the factories deal with all the things that they can deal with and anything that these can't deal with will either get put into the pulverizer or if I don't really need it at this point it will just get put straight into the storage system so uh, for example somewhere along here yeah all of these ores here not the emeralds but these things here like the uh, biomes of plenty and the forestry um, Oh, as magic, all of these I don't need to be processed at the moment. It's just going to take up space and I'm not using any of these mods. So I'm just going to have all of these chucked in a chest and just stored. And later on, when I do come to need them, I can just set up a system to process these. So it's not a big deal. So uh, I could use, uh, for example, Ender.io to sort all of this out. But it's going to get quite costly with all the item filters and it's also a pain to update it. Whereas if I use Steve's factory manager, it should be fairly compact. It's not overly expensive and it's quite easy to update by adding things to the whitelist and blacklists on here. So uh, I may do some of this off camera. It depends how long it's going to take. Uh, I've got a rough idea. I've not actually tested this yet. Um, so just make sure I get these in the right order. So yeah, it goes... Purifying, enriching, crushing, no, purifying, crushing, enriching, smelting. So we're going to put our purifier down first. And I kind of wanted it to be in the middle, but I've got a feeling it's going to turn out to be an even number. So ugh, NEI then messes everything up. Uh, so that's our purifier. And then our crusher. And then I'm going to come behind and put the enricher there and the smelter there so I'm going to set these up so it goes in a circle like that and then I'm going to put two inventory cables next to them I'm going to put the whatever this is called no not there uh, the machine inventory manager which is like the brains of Steve factory in there and then over here I'm going to put the pulverizer and I don't think I actually need these two blocks here. I think it will just work from there to there. But I'm going to leave them there just for the sake of symmetry, if nothing else. And that did work out. Okay, excellent. And on the top, I want my two ender chests. So we've got one for input and one for output. And our input one is the uh, two whites and one yellow. And the one to the storage, which is the output, is the three whites. So excellent, that's all set up. And let's quickly uh, set these up. And we want the output on the right hand side. So the output is blue. So let's just uh, clear all of these. And to clear them, just hold shift and then click on it. And we want dark blue on the right hand side. And we'll have the input on the left hand side. So input is dark red. So we'll set that there. And I don't know if you have to set it over here as well. I always do, but I'm not too sure on this. And the output as well, I always set that, but I'm not 100% sure you need to. And set it to auto eject on. So that will then take items from this side and it will push them over to here. Okay, so welcome back. And I did a bit of this off camera just because it's a, a little bit of a tedious process and um, I had to go through and configure each of these. So um, basically the way it works is the input for this one will come from the left hand side and then it will feed into here and then feed back to here and then feed to there and then it will be taken from there back into there and put into there. Um, you see here this is how we're making the oxygen I've got to finish setting this up. Uh, it uses the electrolytic separators and basically I feed water into here and it makes oxygen and hydrogen and I'm actually just going to dump the hydrogen and I know I could reuse it, I can use it for a couple of things including uh, generating more power but um, to be honest for the small amount of power it makes it's not worth it when you've got a big reactor set up so um, I'm just going to dump that off and we're going to put down some cable here and just run it along. Where are we going to set this up? Let's grab some glass. Somewhere in here. Uh, should have some end of IO glass somewhere. Which is a little bit prettier. There we go. So let's just set up uh, to do here. And we'll put that down for a second. And water source there, water source there. Let's get 
the transfer node and put the transfer node down and then connect that up and then if we take that block back out excellent and we need to put the world interaction upgrade into here and that should start pulling out water and filling these up with water yep brilliant and that should be enough to keep up with these quite easily um, I've got these free gas tanks here just as a buffer so um, when I'm not processing ores these are going to fill up and there should be more than enough oxygen in there to do uh, big processes and I've set the digi miner up over here just to grab some ores um, very quickly just to test this system out so uh, let's try it with the silver ore and I also need to make some more speed upgrades and energy upgrades so you see here I've got a uh, 9 and 9 and this one's got 9 and 9 but these two here uh, don't so that's 1 and 1 and that's 1 and 1 and I did have all of these upgraded but I had a few issues where um, I'd set all of this up and then moved it and it actually lost the items so I've had to remake them so I'm going to have to remake the speed upgrades again uh, so if we chuck the silver ore in here We'll just do it manually for the moment, and Steve's factory manager will manage all of this for us, but just to sort of show how it works, it's going to um, turn these into clumps, and then these get pushed across to here, so you see you get three silver clumps, and then these silver clumps get turned into dusts, which are dirty dusts, and then they get processed from the enrichment, and then they get turned into here and get smelted. So uh, yeah, once these have the speed upgrades, it's going to be a really, really quick system and uh, it does the three times uh, multiplication on the ores as well, which is really cool. And these should be keeping up just fine with oxygen projection. Uh, why do you have no oxygen? Uh, maybe because it's using it, it's draining it from there. That should be okay. I'll keep an eye on it. If it seems that we run out of oxygen, I'll just add more of them. It's not a big deal. So the next thing we need to do actually is set up Steve's factory manager and I'm not going to go through the whole thing here now but what we're going to have is a trigger uh, just to start it off and we're going to have an input which is going to be the input chest which is the um, ender chest with the yellow on and then the input is going to go out uh, how did I do this before. I did play around with this a little bit and somewhere here uh, we have a group node uh, to do flow control. So basically we can use this to have one input and two outputs. So uh, input is going to come from the chest and then some of the outputs going to go to here and some of it's going to go to here and we're actually going to need oh, we'll put five outputs we actually need three outputs but that will do just fine and then we'll have the three outputs so one two three one of them's for the pulverizer one of them is for the mechanism system and one of them is just to go straight into the storage so I'm going to set all of these up, and once it's set up, I'll come back and show you how it's all set up, because it's going to take a while, I'll just have to set up whitelists and filters and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I'll be right back. So um, basically we've got it set, so anything that will go in the pulverizer will go in there, anything that will go into the whole mech system will go in here. Uh, the thing we haven't done is set it so that anything left over um, will get put into storage, and the reason I haven't done that yet is because... I basically don't know all the things that aren't going to go through the system. So um, once it builds up in here, I basically have to set up a new set of filters. So the way this works is our first section here is basically involved with putting the items into the machine. So uh, the trigger is just set on an interval, so it'll just run all the time. Input items are pulling items from this input chest. Um, so that would be connected to the quarry, for example, or the uh, Digiminer. And we're a target, it doesn't matter for that because it's a chest. And the items I've set to blacklist at the moment. Um, all of the biomes are plenty stuff, uh, some of the ender stuff. And there'll probably be other things in here as well that um, I don't want it to try and pull out of this chest to put into these machines. So um, 
that I'll basically build up over time. And the thing, the reason I set up with uh, Steve's factory rather than any other system is because you can have basically an endless uh, blacklist or whitelist. So if I was trying to sort this out with um, Endrio conduits, for example, I'd need a, a ton of different pipes connected to set all of these filters. So it's a, a lot, lot easier. And it's really easy just to go and change because I don't need the items to set up the filters. I can just select them. Um, so yeah, basically that filters out them items and all the rest get put into either the pulverizer or the mech stuff. So the pulverizer, it's finding the pulverizer, it's putting it into the east, which is the back. And then it's going to put in diamonds, emeralds, redstone and coal. And I actually need to add lapis into there as well. So give that a second just to catch up. So we add the lapis. Also see how easy it is to add things to the filters. Um, it's just a case of searching for it and clicking it in. So basically all of them things on that filter will get put into the pulverizer. And the same for the mechanism setup. Um, it's targeting the purifier. And then it's targeting the north side, which is the left hand side of it there. And then it's got all of these items on the whitelist. And when I'm searching through here, I don't know if all of these are necessary. For example, there's like three different entries for copper ore um, if you search for different ores. So there might be duplicates there. I'm not too sure, but I've added them in. Um, probably don't need to. If I get anything that comes up that just sits in this chest, I can always add it to the filters. So um, it's kind of a work in progress. The filters are going to be adjusted as we go along. Uh, but in theory now, at least, that should put all of the metals that can be done in there and all the rest of it will go in there. And anything that won't go in there or there is just going to sit in this chest for the moment. Um, so the next thing we need to do is get all of the processed items out of here. So we need to get it out of that block there and out of the pulverizer. So I've just set up another trigger here and basically the same thing. So this one targets the pulverizer for the inventory and it's pulling it from the self, which is the back. No, not the back, it's uh, that away. Yep. And it's then putting it all into the output chest, which is this end of the chest here, which I've actually disconnected from the storage system at the moment just to make sure it's working okay. And same for mechanism, it's targeting the smeltery and it's pulling the items out from the north, which is on the left hand side because that's where it's connected to the factory manager and there's no blacklist or whitelist it's basically anything that it can pull out of that side it will pull out and the same for there so uh, what I will do actually is um, I'm going to set a redstone emitter up here so I can turn this on and off and once I've done that I'm going to go and set the digiminer up in the mining world and we can actually test the system just to make sure it's working okay so uh, let me set that up and I'll be right back so welcome back. I very quickly just put the uh, redstone receiver on there with a lever on so it's turned off at the moment and switched the trigger so while high. So it's basically the same as what we did with the uh, auto crafting setup. And that's just so I can um, turn this off for the moment and we can check it's running. So I'm going to quickly zip on over to the mining world. So uh, warp mining. So welcome back. I'm just here in the mining world. Just going to set up the uh, digital miner. Uh, let's plonk down the anchor there. And we need to give it some power as well, so check the test fact on the top. Should be using the external power. And make sure that's receive only. Excellent. And just check the end of chest on the back. And if you've not used this before, it's a really, really powerful machine. It can do a lot of stuff um, other than just mining, so you can use it to sort of replace blocks. So say, for example, you build a big house out of cobblestone and you want to replace it with gold blocks, uh, this will do that for you, um, which is really cool. Uh, what we've got it set to do here is we've got Silk Touch on, which uses a lot more power. So you can see here it uses uh, 2,400 RF per tick. And if we turn that off, it uses 400. So it uses an extra 2,000 RF per tick to do silk touch, but um, we definitely want that on. And if we go to configuration, you can see here, I've already got a filter set up. And if we click on this, it's basically star or star. And stars are basically a uh, wild card. So anything that has or in the name um, will be picked up by the Digiminer basically. So if it's say for example lead ore, it will be picked up. So um, this should basically mine everything that's in range. And I just deleted that because the zombies scared me. Yeah, again for the villagers, excellent. Uh, so yeah, set that up again. So all dictionary, star, or star, 
hit the tick, it should come up and cycle through all the things that it will pick up. And hit save. And radius is how many blocks out from the center block of this it will look. So we're just going to leave that at 10 so it's not too far out. And the minimum is zero, so that's bedrock. Maximum, we're on actually 71. So let's set that up to, uh, let's set that to 75. So that will search from bedrock to level 75, which is just above where we are now. And if we hit start, you see there's 1,352 blocks to um, mine out. And that's chucking it all into this ender chest. So if I nip home now, and I'll meet you when we get back there, we should see all this on the other side. And we can turn on the uh, Steve's factory and make sure it's all getting sorted OK. So here we are back at the base, and you can see all of the items are starting to come into this chest here. Um, so this should be a reasonable amount to test with. Excellent. So if we flip this on, you should see straight away that's pulled in the redstone to there. It's pulled in a whole bunch of different ones to there. And these ones should all be left in here until there is space for them. So we shouldn't be seeing anything go back into here apart from the outputs. So that all seems to be working just great. Excellent. And it's not got to this stage yet. I need to get the speed upgrades for this still, but I shall do that off camera, I think. Mm. Yep, I think this is just processing it that quick. You can't actually see it going through. So let's have a look in here again. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah, that seems to be working just great. So like I said, the last thing I need to do is basically um, set up a, another one of these to go through and filter out anything that doesn't get processed by this and just stick it straight into the storage chest. Um, it's fairly straightforward, but it's going to be a long-winded process because I need to see what all of these ores are going to be that I can't process. Um, I will also need to set something up for the yellow light because this will work in the enrichment chamber, but it doesn't work with the purification chamber. So I might just set up an enrichment chamber and a smeltery um, just to do that. So I'll add this onto the system. But uh, the good thing about the system, it's really easy to expand. I just got to put a couple more cables down and check the machines down and add it in here. So um, yeah, pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to set up, let this run through, set up the rest of the filters, and then I'll show you the final results when we've got all of the rest of the filtering in place. So, welcome back, and I've got this more or less finished now. I've run into a couple of snags. Um, one problem is that the bauxite ore and the sulfur ore do not show up in Steve's uh, factory manager. So when I try and add these to any of the list and you search for them, they just don't show up. So um, what I'm going to have to do is just use uh, Endo IO Conduit, and I'm going to put a filter on here. And I'm just going to chuck these into the filter so that it'll just pull them out and chuck them straight into the output chest. So uh, let's just set that. And we want it to extract. We want the filter. Uh, we want the bauxite and the sulfur ore. Always active. And set that to insert. So in theory, that should just pull them out. Excellent. So yeah, that's pretty much it. We've got the uh, sag mill here, which is dealing with uh, basically just the yellorium at the moment. Um, and then we've got the pulverizer for the other bits that we had there before. And I think I've covered everything. There's probably going to be bits that turn up that um, I haven't got in any of the filters. But uh, you can see here, this is sort of uh, spread out quite a bit. So this is the same as before. All the stuff that's getting processed uh, goes through here and gets filtered into each of these machines. And this is basically pulling the stuff out of the machines. And then the unprocessed stuff is just pulled out here. And you just basically set white lists for all the stuff that you want to move around. So, uh, yeah, it's fairly straightforward. You just have to think logically about which direction items are moving and what bits you want to put on what filters. Um, so it may look complicated, but it's really not that bad. And it's really easy to modify afterwards. So, um, yeah, let me uh, quickly go and set the Digiminer up again. I'll set it running and we'll take one last look at this going before I uh, sign off. And also, I did also put the energy conduits there, which is why these weren't creating enough oxygen before. So, yep, let me set that up and I'll be right back. So here we are then, it all seems to be working beautifully. So you can see here, 
the stuff that's sitting in here is basically the stuff that is waiting to be processed. Anything that can't be processed just gets pulled straight out. Um, so it's chucking like all of the iron and tin and everything into here. That's all going around. Uh, all of the redstones getting put in the pulverizer. All the yellorium is getting put into the sag mill, and then that's getting processed in here. And the nice thing about this as well is you get this cyanite dust too, um, which I believe is this is what you can use to make yeah, turbine stuff. So that's a good way to get that quickly to get the turbines going, which is uh, really, really useful. I did also notice actually that you can um, sort of get a, a feedback on this where you can put two yellorium dust back into an ore block and then use a sag mill to do it out again so you can just cycle them around and every time you get a 5% chance of getting this dust. Um, so if you want a lot of this quickly, it might be worth setting up a few machines to do that. It does use a fair amount of power to do it, but it's probably worth it. Um, so yeah, pulverizer is now doing the coal. It's all getting uh, pulled out and put into the outfit chest. And then that's all just going through into the sorting system there. So yeah, working brilliantly. Nice and compact as well. There's not loads and loads of cables and wires and everything everywhere. It's all, uh, I could actually compact this a whole lot more. Like all of the oxygen production, I could just put underneath and have it piping in from the front or from the back. And I could maybe do like a three by three system and just have it stacked up, which would be pretty cool. Um, but I just really wanted to play around with it see if it was possible to do it, which it most definitely is. Um, Steve's Factory Manager, really, really powerful mod. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. So uh, yeah, definitely give it a try. So that's about it for now. Uh, next time, I think I'm maybe going to pretty the place up a little bit around here and do a bit of building. So uh, yeah, until then, take care. See you later. Bye-bye.